All right, so tank's in here, nice and secure. So now, somehow we gotta convert this tank to fuel injection. Looks like there's probably at least 10 good ways to do this. Uh, there's companies, I think Aeromotive makes a kit that actually plugs into the stock sending unit and fuel feed location on this tank that will just hang a fuel pump in there. Uh, I think Aeromotive also sells a EFI ready Mustang, like a 1970 Mustang tank that comes with a fuel hat and a fuel pump hanging in it already. And actually looking on Amazon, that's probably the way to go. The more I look and the more I look at options and cost, that Aeromotive stealth tank is probably best bang for the buck. You get a tank, it's already got the hole stuck in it and it already has the hardware and the fittings ready for you to just stick it in your truck or your vehicle, hook up the power and ground wire to it and hook your fuel feed and return up to it and you're set to go. None of this stuff that I'm about to have to go through here where I actually cut a hole in the tank and swap the fuel pump out and then um, put a fuel hat over here. So I'd love to tell you guys that I had this whole thing planned out and I had planned to put the air motive kit in here from the beginning and that I wasn't going to try to cheap out or do anything but in the effort of full disclosure let me just tell you what I planned to do in the beginning of this project. My plan was to go to a junkyard well, I went to a junkyard and I pulled a steel tank out of a F-250 Ford van or a Ford Econoline van. It had a steel tank, it had a fuel pump hanger that bolted in and out of the top of it. The fuel pump hanger um, had a feed line, it had a return line, and it had a vent line. And I thought to myself, I'm going to save some money, I'm going to show people how to do this cheap. I'm going to prove to myself that I can do it cheaply. And so I bought this tank, I pulled it out of the yard, I drug it home. I cut the top off of it, I cut I cut that fuel pump basket out of the bottom of it because I was going to figure out how to put that in the bottom of this Ford Mustang fuel tank that I'm putting in this truck here and I was going to somehow graft all this together. I just didn't have a real good plan to make it all come to fruition. Um, so after cutting this tank up and having all these pieces of sharp metal laying around the shop, I decided you know what, by the time I try to cut a hole on top of this new 70 Mustang gas tank I have and somehow weld or glue this basket to the bottom of it and then and then graft in this new section of this Ford Econoline tank and try to make the whole thing seal up and be leak proof, I was like, this is insanity. Um, so what I ended up doing was just scrapping this whole fuel tank basically after I took it apart, cut it all to pieces and decided that the air motive kit was worth the money and was going to save me the time and if there's any sort of risk of a leak or future failure of this thing. So it gave me the Dash 8 fuel line that I wanted, if it gave me the ability to put the high volume Walbro fuel pump on there and not have any sort of flow issues. It already came with a vent and a return and a setup for AN fittings. So I decided that was the way to go. Anyway. There's this quick fast forward version of how this video was originally planned to turn out. And it didn't go that way. So now back to the air motive install and what I actually did to actually feed fuel up to the motor in this thing. So my two biggest concerns I had with this were one, having enough fuel volume to feed that motor. Um, so I'm doing a turbo LS1 motor. So I'm figuring somewhere like a 400 LPH pump is what I need. So I made the decision to go with a Air Motive uh, Universal Stealth System. This is the in tank system they have with the bladder around it that keeps fuel around the fuel pump at all times. And that way, when you're in hard corners or whatever else, um, I'm not sure if I'm just being overly cautious with this, but I was super concerned about having fuel starvation issues. It's an unwarranted, unfounded claim, a concern that I have but for some reason, I'm worried about it. So, so that ramble and Rob's soapbox slash counseling session out of the way, we'll go ahead and tear into this thing. Okay, so it looks like this thing comes with, uh, well, not a sending unit, this came with the tank. Uh, it comes with this fuel hat with no pump actually installed, which is actually kind of preferred for what I'm gonna do with it here. It comes with this uh, pretty big, bladder and sponge so you can see all this is is a plastic like flower pot type looking thing with some holes in the bottom to allow fuel to come in here let the sponge soak it up 
And then as the fuel pump sucks fuel down out of that bladder, it continues to just deplete the fuel storage that it has stored temporarily in this giant sponge here as you go into like a hard corner or something. And there's some foam here for, I guess we'll figure out where that goes. And then the nice part is they send you the air motive fuel pump actually packed up into its own container here, which is nice because I'm not going to use this. I'm just going to put this right back on eBay and try to get the money back for the Walboro 450 that I bought off eBay. So this is what I'm gonna end up sticking on this system and plumbing into this air motive fuel system here. So first order of business is to figure out where exactly I wanna put this thing in the tank. So for me, I'd like to put it up in this front corner of the tank. This lets me have quick access to my fuel hose and those kind of fittings. Um, remember the sending unit actually comes in from the bottom. So this piece will be sitting in the center line of the tank kind of inside of here as the float uh, goes up and down. And then obviously I have the filler neck back here to contend with, which should be out of the way for this. So if I were to put this fuel hat right here in the center of the tank, just turn it upside down for mock purposes, it would obviously, it looks like it would probably block this float from um, going up and down properly. Whoa, I got much of noise. It would probably block this fuel float from the sitting unit from going up and down properly. So we'll keep it in the corner, keep it out of the way. It looks like with this sponge material on the bottom side of this uh, hat, it should be plenty to go in these ridges on top of the tank and seal all that up just fine. So the instructions say we need a three and a quarter hole. So I'm gonna see if I can find a hole saw and mark off a three and a quarter circle and then just pop this thing in. All right, back after a brief Home Depot run interruption for a couple of bolts to bolt that tank into the frame and then a three and a quarter inch hole saw for the directions. Okay, so the other thing I forgot to consider is that this bed brace mounts across these two holes here. And so it's essentially gonna sit right across here and make this low spot across the tank. So I'm gonna have to have a way to make sure that the fuel head has plenty of clearance and that if I run some 45 degree AN fittings out of here, we just pretend that this is the bed brace going across here. I'll probably have to do something like this where I come in and kind of cut it at an angle to section it to go over the hoses they are going to have to run out of this fuel pump hat and underneath this mount to go back and tuck into the frame rail on that side there. So just some more things to keep in mind as you're starting to stab holes and stuff and figure out where things go. There's going to be plenty of space to plant this uh, flower pot thing inside the tank. And again, not interfere with the sitting unit in the center of it. And obviously this has no impact on the cross price of the tank once it's down inside the tank. Alright, brand new tank. Meet a three and a quarter inch hole saw. That should be a fun mess to clean out of that tank now. Whoops, the camera cut out there for a little bit. So the battery died while I was recording. Luckily you guys didn't miss anything too crazy. Um, so after I cut the hole in here and vacuumed the tank out, the kit comes with this little installation assist tool slash hole template so that you can uh, drill your holes in the tank accordingly here. So what I did is I had the three and a quarter inch, three and a half inch hole here that we drilled in the tank. And then this, uh, this ring just aligns right on it. And so it sits over there um, like that. You're able to take your drill with the provided bit that comes in the kit and just go around and punch a hole in the tank to each one of these holes correspondingly in the ring for the template here. So then after you pull the ring off, yeah, the kit comes with this stud kit with a, a C-clip in the end here, which actually just drops in the tank and then spins around and aligns with the holes. I ended up having to take some pliers and actually clamp the metal down in a few spots here to get it to align with the rings the studs in this ring just perfectly 
Um, the nice part is now it actually holds the studs in place. There's, you're not trying to figure out how to, you know, hold this up with your finger and put the cap on over it or something like that. The next cool part about this installation tool is it actually acts as a guide to help you funnel that piece of foam into the tank. So that orange, the yellow foam that's in there would want to get caught on the sharp edge of this tank here and actually tear as it goes in. So the cool part is you fit this over here and then it gives you a nice smooth guide into the tank. So you just wad that foam up kind of in a tight bunch and you put it down to the tank where you want it. And as you're putting it in there, this gives you a nice uh, funneled snag free hole to make the installation of that foam into the tank. Now, if you don't take the foam out of the tank, you're probably in a bad spot because my guess is that foam coming out of the sharp hole, it's gonna come out of there in chunks instead of a nice smooth piece. Um, anyways, that's where we're at now. So at this point, I'm ready to go ahead and drop that fuel pump assembly down in the tank. So the fuel pump's assembled here, and on this one, I didn't use the Aeromotive 340 pump that comes in the kit. I actually spot this 455 Walbro off of eBay. So this unit went together pretty easily, uh, just like a standard fuel pump hanger in any other vehicle. Um, I had to adjust this bar by taking a die grinder and cutting it to length here so that it sits on the bottom of this Mustang tank accordingly. If you have a deeper tank, you would leave it a little bit longer. If you had a more shallow tank, you would cut off a few extra bars here. So everything seems like it goes together pretty nicely here. Uh, it came with a connector which plugged into the Aeromotive style connector. So that was nice to have those two things made up. And then Aeromotive provides this round pickup sock in their kit. So I went ahead and put that on this Walbro. The one that came with the Walbro was pretty long. And I think it would have actually folded up inside of that foam tank down there. The kit comes with this foam gasket. It just installs right over the holes. So the cool part about the foam gasket is it gives you a nice way to seal up these ridge tanks like this. You don't have to worry about uh, trying to make sure you're putting this on some perfectly smooth part of the tank or something. So my plan is to clock this thing so that I kind of run the fuel hoses all back to this corner or this side of the frame over here so I can run the feed line, the return line, and the vent line all down this side of the frame as one kind of chunk of hoses to keep it kind of neat. So here looks pretty straightforward and pretty simple. Just going to go ahead and put these nylon washers on and then the nuts to lock it on place. So that about covers that. Um, short of getting some fuel lines hooked up and some power run back to this thing, this fuel pump is in the tank and ready to go at this point. So just a quick walkthrough from my plumbing to my wiring here. I'm not the best at building these hoses, so I'm not gonna do a video on how to assemble these AN hoses or anything. There's a lot of guys that are a lot better than I am. I end up with leaks once in a while and I kind of struggle to get the ends to seat all the way in the housings. Anyways, small soapbox by Rob here. So this thing has got a 8AN feed line, it has a 6AN return line and a 6AN vent line. So I just got some Amazon and eBay hose kits. So they come with the 8AN line and then an assortment of 8AN fittings and then the same thing for the 6ANs. So for this one I just put a straight 8AN fitting on here to make sure that this hose kind of points off towards the frame rail. I put a 45 on the vent and then a 90 on the return. And that kind of keeps everything going towards the frame rail where I want it here. The cool part was that Walbro fuel pump that I bought came with a connector. Uh, so I was able to just use this nice weather pack connector here and make the assembly removable and it's grounded to the frame. So that way if I ever want to pull the fuel pump assembly out, I disconnect the three lines and then I pull the one connector and the whole thing comes out as one unit. You don't have to mess with trying to take these little goofy um, eyelet ring connectors off of the fuel pump housing itself. So that's where I'm at with getting the thing plumbed up and getting this set up to run in the truck. I'll kind of show you guys what I did to run it along the frame and to run it back up to the firewall up front.
So here's a shot from underneath. You can see the fuel tank in the back. The bed's back on the truck now. And so I just ran those hoses kind of all in a big group here underneath the truck. And there's the three lines and there's an electrical line that runs there too. So it just runs along the bottom here. It kind of tucks up nice and neat out of the way. The fuel injectors I'm running did recommend that you put a, I think it's a 10 micron filter on there. So Air Motive made one that fit within those specs that fit on the Dash 8 line. So I just mounted that there with some zip ties. It's really fancy. I got a mount for it. I need to put that mount on. As it continues on forward, it turns up where the cab floor ends and turns into the firewall up there. And then when it comes to the front here, the lines that we just saw into the chassis, there's a feed line and then back in the back is a return line. So the feed line comes through the fuel pressure regulator and makes a U, like a 180, and comes out to this fuel rail here. And then it just feeds both sides of the fuel rail with a steady, I think it's like 62, 70 PSI, whatever it is, uh, with a crossover. So it feeds this rail and that rail. There's a lot of guys that talk about hooking these up differently with doing some sort of a like loop through system here and then putting the regulator somewhere else or putting the regulator up on the front of the fuel reel here or something like that. This is how I did mine. I'd seen other guys that had done the same thing. So I copied what they did. I'm not going for any crazy amount of fuel flow here, even though it might kind of look like it, but hopefully this keeps up with what I'm trying to do and gets me rocking and rolling. I also added a air motive gauge to the front of the Holly regulator there just to keep an eye on what's going on and see how much pressure this thing's actually making. And again, the Dash 8 hoses with the red fittings on them here. This is just a kit I got off of Amazon. I'll try to post a link to that stuff. So if you guys think that's something you want to put on your own vehicle or you're just interested in looking at it, you can go check that out for yourselves too. It's pretty affordable for what you get. So that about wraps it up for this video. I really appreciate you guys watching, especially if you watched all the way to the end here. It really helps out the channel a lot. So if you guys like the content, go ahead and subscribe. If you like the video, press that like button down there. That helps these things out a lot. And I'll see you guys in the next one.